The Cousin Center is very interested in understanding the interactions between the brain, the body, and the immune system, and the science behind that, and generating rigorous scientific evidence about the efficacy of these approaches. I think this center is one of the few places, if not the only place, where we're really looking at this interface between neural and immune processes, but doing that in a clinical context. It's an interdisciplinary center, really before the notion or the kind of catchwork of interdisciplinary became sort of used. And this particular center has brought together leading scientists to ask how the brain and the body interact to impact the immune system. But more importantly, what are the impacts of these interactions on disease progression and the likelihood of developing disease? And secondly, we've really taken really groundbreaking steps to understand what we can do about it. The way our research informs the mind-body link is really to map out the molecular mechanisms, the specific biological gears and pulleys that allow our experience of everyday life to change the way disease unfolds in our body. Part of the reason it's important to do this kind of work is it helps us understand what's going on in the black box of epidemiology, how differences in life circumstances can turn into differences in disease, and why that actually makes sense given our evolutionary heritage. My research focuses on mind-body interactions, and we study those primarily in the context of cancer. So most of our work is trying to understand things like, what are the pathways through which stress can get inside the body and potentially impact things like tumor development and progression? We also are very interested in trying to understand how changes in the immune system can influence the brain and behavior, leading to symptoms like fatigue, cognitive problems that plague cancer patients and survivors. One of the things that I've been studying for the past several years is how our brain processes basic social emotional experiences. A lot of work has shown that there's this relationship between inflammation and depression, but all of this work has been primarily correlational. And so one of the things that we're doing in our research is we're actually looking at this experimentally so that we can tell whether the inflammation is causally increasing depressive symptoms. We've been very interested in how stress impacts health outcomes, and one of the most striking areas of research has been how stress leads to infectious disease. And we've been really at the forefront showing that major depressive disorder and sleep problems lead to changes in the immune system that are critical for protection against infectious disease. I had insomnia so very badly that I was not sleeping at all at night. I found myself awake the entire night what we've shown here at the center is that depression, that sleep problems, that social isolation all lead to increases in inflammation, that increases the risk of these chronic diseases. I wanted some type of relief, which wasn't medication. The center's really developed very novel and innovative interventions that have targeted these specific behaviors and targeted these inflammatory pathways to reduce that inflammatory disease risk. We've conducted over seven different trials with Tai Chi, all funded by the National Institutes of Health, that evaluated immune function, depression, fatigue, sleep problems in older adults, in middle-aged adults, in rheumatoid arthritis patients and cancer survivors. After just a couple of sessions of the Tai Chi, I noticed that I started to sleep at night. We found that the Tai Chi is very effective we see a significant decrease in inflammatory responses when we measure them by the proteins that are circulating in our blood, inflammatory responses whether we measure them to the level of the single cell, and there's a decrease in inflammatory gene expression. Separate studies have also been carried out in yoga to produce a very similar reduction in inflammatory signal as a Tai Chi, yoga, and mindful awareness practices. See if you can listen. The mindful awareness practices that we have promoted and, and really be now begun to study in the Mindful Awareness Research Center is a practice that is as effective in many ways for the treatment of depression, insomnia, and targeting inflammation as the Tai Chi has been. A lot of these skills that we're learning are really life skills. It's like this master toolbox 
that can help you deal with life as it is. So the next major step is to disseminate this information. The research and the education go hand in hand because what happens is the research shows positive results for meditation and mindfulness and that encourages and inspires people. So the research really helps disseminate the message of education. One of the things that we're beginning to do is to move what we know into the primary care setting and export it into the global community. Over 120,000 people are taking our online courses. Our research is really pointing the direction for the use of these interventions to prevent disease and the occurrence of disease. I'm so happy that I did participate in this particular research. It really absolutely does work.